So this is the scratch interface you see in front of you here, and the coordinates are mapped there in the bottom right-hand corner of the stage. So the stage is the area where all the action occurs in Scratch. And we have a few different views of the stage here. You can, uh, you can view the stage in a bigger screen if you want to see the action better. Go back to the screen where you're working on editing. In lots of packages, you work in edit mode and presentation mode. So then when you're, you normally switch to a, full, a more full screen presentation, back to the normal mode as well. The next item in the, the interface I'll show you here is the, the toolbar, which is a few different tools here to either copy, if you select your sprite, you can shrink a sprite, you can grow a sprite. So if I click on the sprite here, I can shrink. Okay, so that's your toolbar, which you can edit uh, your sprite there with. Uh, the menu bar we're going to use later on when we're doing the common tasks like saving. Tabs, yeah. There's three tabs here. One is the scripts tab for your writing areas. Another one here is a, a costume tab. And you can see here, when I go into the costume tab, this particular sprite has two different costumes. So watch what happens here when I switch the costume. Watch, what, watch what's happening on the stage here. This guy's running along. Now what we want to do is, if you want him to run along the stage, you want to do that by switching costumes. So we want to program that in rather than me going to the costumes here, like so. Another thing you can do is sounds, as we keep hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our, our sound there. And you can even record your own sounds. So for example, if I hit the record button here, I wonder what sound I'll, yeah. I, I, uh, I'll record myself saying hello. Hello there, how are you? I'll just play that back to make sure it works. Hello there, how are you? Okay. <laughs> Maybe another take. I don't like that, I'll just get rid of that. Um, yeah, this cat is sort of a posh old English cat, I think, yeah, yeah. Here we go, let's record this. Good afternoon. Okay. Stop that, let's play that back. Good afternoon. Yeah, that's splendid. Okay. <laughs> We'll use that in a minute. Now you can see it's got this generic name here, Recording One, don't you? So maybe, just so we'll remember when we're using that in a script later on, I'm just going to call it Good Afternoon. So you can name all these things. And the costumes, Costume One and Costume Two is fine for this, okay? I'll show you a little trick with costumes later on. Let's get on to the scripts area here, which is blank at the moment. So we want this scripts area to come alive, this central area of the screen there that you see in front of you. And to do that, what you've got to do is you've got to go to what's called a blocks palette here, and you've got to start pulling out commands and putting them together to build your program. So it's like building with Lego blocks, if you like. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, to pull out a command here that starts everything off. It's your trigger, if you like. So when your trigger is clicked, something happens. So for example, when my trigger is clicked, if I get move 10 steps, you can see I can click on the command here and you can see my on the stage you can see this guy moving forward 10 steps. I'll just pull him back a bit there. I'll make it more dramatic. I'll make him move 50 steps at, or 30 steps at a time. So now when I double click on my script, he's hopping 30 steps at a time. But what triggers my script there is the green arrow. So when I click on the green arrow, I'll try that again. There we go. It actions out the script there for me, okay? So eventually what you want to be doing is you want to be going into full screen mode and our presentation mode and I can use my arrow from there and you don't see any of the script that's going on in the background. And you might even program things like your keyboard actions or a joystick if you really get into it, okay? So that's that. Um, so I want to make this, uh, for this here, I want to make this cat, um, I want to make him look like he's walking. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to the costumes here. Costume 2 is the other costume. I'm going to go into the looks area here, and in this, you can give it a command to switch the costume. So I'm going to clip that in here, and I'm going to switch to costume 2. So when I click, he's on costume 2 right now. And then I'm going to wait a second by using a command from the control area to achieve our animation effect. And then maybe just half a second, 0.5 of a second, I'm going to switch back to costume 1. I'm going to pull that command in there, and they're just, see the way I'm just snapping it on like a Lego brick there? It's the way it works. So I'm going to change that variable there, as we call it, to costume one, and it's going to pick up the first costume here. So when I act out that script, what I think it should do is move 30 steps, switch the second costume, switch back to the first costume, and let's see how it works. Okay, you kind of get that little animation effect of it walking. Now what a good programmer does, 
when you write a bit of code is you put a bit of comments because that's written in a computer language that not everybody might understand and you want people to understand what you're doing. So if you right click in the gray area here, I'm going to add a comment to the script here and I'm going to say, this makes the cat walk, look like he's walking. Now another reason why you do that is because if you're working in a team project, you might be integrating your, your sprite with somebody else's sprite and if you don't comment what you're trying to do when the other person picks up your sprite they might not have an idea what you're trying to achieve so it's a good design feature I think I can drag and clip it onto my script there yeah I've snipped that comment onto that script there so you can see the scratch language is written there and the English explanation of what you're doing is here so that's the, the cat walking and yeah let's get him saying hello as well so under the sound area here oh yeah i can snip on the command here and the good afternoon sound i've made there that will play hopefully so not only will he go for a walk good afternoon very good <laughs> and if you're extremely into this you can get him to say i'll clip this on as well to coincide i'll get him to say good afternoon with a speech bubble okay and let's go presentation mode for this. Good afternoon. Splendid.